Hey guys, Ryan from the Moon is Dead World here again, um, back with another review, this time of a film that I did review for the website in written detail, but also one that I wanted to give uh, a video review to as well. Uh, and it's a great release uh, from Mondo Macabro uh, called Symptoms by Jose Ramon Luraz. Um, and Symptoms is a film that really hasn't gotten much publicity since it released back in the 70s, 1974. Um, it is a really moody and atmospheric uh, and a chilling, uh, kind of like a haunted house story almost, um, very similar to some of the Hammer Horror films. And we do see quite a bit of similarity to um, directors like Jess Franco, um, Paul Nash, he's people like... Um, People like that who were uh, definitely into the erotic films of uh, the 1970s. Um, combining horror and eroticism together to create uh, one big um, censorship dilemma. Um, for those who don't know uh, who Jose Larraz is, he directed a few um, prominent movies in the 70s. Uh, one of the biggest ones would be Vampires, uh, which spelled with a Y, uh, not the traditional V-A-M-P-I-R-E-S, but with a Y. Um, that one features a lot of lesbian action in it, um, and so that's kind of what he became known for, but actually um, he had done uh, quite a few other uh, horror releases, uh, notably Whirlpool in 1971. Um, later on, he went on to do a few other releases, um, one of the bigger ones being Black Candles, which did feature, again, a lot of eroticism and sexuality. Um, uh, but Symptoms does not have uh, a lot of that sexuality. There's a few scenes of nudity. Uh, in one scene, uh, it looks like Angela Pleasance takes off her robe, but instead that's a stunt double, which she uh, makes us uh, aware of on this release uh, in the special features uh, where she does an interview. Thanks, Mondo Macabro, for clearing that up. Um, but really, Symptoms is uh, quite a quite a slow but um, very creepy film. Um, most of it has to do with uh, Angela Pleasance, who stars as Helen. Um, she's kind of a, a spinster living alone in this gigantic estate out in the countryside. Um, and she asks her, her girlfriend, Anne, to come and visit her uh, and stay with her for a little while. So Anne, obviously, being a, being a good friend, Noting, noting that uh, Helen is not not okay, uh, she has some sort of mental illness uh, that we don't really find out about, but is just hinted at, especially when she goes to visit uh, her doctor, or I'm sorry, her pharmacist. Um, she comes to, Anne comes to stay with Helen, um, and uh, for a little while they have some fun. Um, there's some stormy nights, uh, they kind of uh, share... Um, their uh, stories with each other until things get a little weird. Um, Helen is kind of obsessed with staying within the house and also with a woman named Cora who used to live there. She used to be her roommate, uh, but now she's not. And there's not really any mention of where she went or, you know, what happened to her, but Helen makes it known that she's no longer there, uh, but she keeps a, a picture of her around and also, in the middle of the night, goes searching for her. So Anne is kind of our entry into uh, this this place, uh, the story that Jose Larraz is telling. Um, and we kind of see Helen on the outside and also from Helen's perspective. So um, there's kind of an interesting juxtaposition there that we see. Um, but what's most interesting is when things are shown from um, Anne's perspective, because we get a lot of um, that creepy feeling when Anne is actually going throughout the house. The house is, is a character in itself. It's very, um, uh, very atmospheric, dark, and moody. Uh, and Symptoms as a whole is very um, dark and dreary and often... Uh, dour in its approach to horror. Uh, it's, it, it is focused on some of those generic tropes like um, dark and stormy nights. Um, th that's a big one. Really that all plays into the whole atmosphere of symptoms. Uh, all of its uh, slow building, its, its pacing comes together for um, a movie that really emphasizes the eeriness of the whole, the whole facility that we've been staying in with Helen and Anne. Um, one of the most interesting things about Symptoms is that it, it gets rid of 
uh, Anne about three quarters of the way through the film. Um, she's been our window into this this uh, horror film so far, um, but in an instant she's killed off uh, in a really creepy, intense scene where she um, hears some moaning coming from Helen's room. She uh, investigates, finds no one in the room, and then finds that there's an open attic door uh, within that room. Uh, she heads upstairs uh, to take a look and, and investigate up there to try to find Helen, and uh, she's pursued uh, up the stairs by a killer. And we don't know who that killer is because it's a, a point of view shot, um, but we do see that it's a, a pretty intense murder. Um, and that's that's by far probably one of the best scenes within Symptoms uh, is when Anne is actually killed off. But there are a lot of those within Symptoms that help define this film as a really atmospheric and gothic horror tale. Um, one of the best things about <coughs> after Anne is killed is that um, we have this one caretaker character named Brady. Uh, he's been a strange kind of out awkward on the outskirts character throughout much of Symptoms. Um, but once Anne is out of the picture, he becomes a lot more suspicious. He's not really sure what's going on with Helen. Um, whatever happened to Helen. Um, and uh, she is also very uh, uh, cautious around him and knows that he's been snooping. He's, he he's knows something, she, um, but she's not sure what. So uh, what... Uh, what begins is a, a, a search for the bodies that who, the killer that's on the premises has been leaving. And uh, the Cora character that we've kind of been hinted at, we've seen before, but and has been hinted at, and who Helen often sees in mirrors and uh, around the house, uh, is found at the uh, marsh that uh, Brady continues to visit to see if he can find the bodies. So we see that happen um, throughout the film, and f once Anne is killed, it, it becomes pretty clear that Helen is the killer. She's the one that has has uh, been the killer all along, and really, Cora is not a character that is actually alive anymore. It's, it's a figment of Helen's imagination at this point. But... We do follow Helen throughout probably another half an hour of the film as she attempts to figure out what to do with Brady. She first invites him over, uh, tries to, to woo him, to seduce him, and it doesn't work. And so eventually she ends up murdering him uh, in the same parlor uh, estate as she did with Anne and Cora before that. Um, what's really quite creepy and a nice touch from Laraz is that Anne is always in the picture. Um, she's been sitting in the the parlor waiting uh, as a dead body, always seeing everything that's happening, and the camera often pans to her, uh, her lifeless corpse sitting there. It's, it's a nice creepy touch, uh, one that keeps cropping up in the film. I think that the finale with where we finally do find out that Helen is the killer. It's a, a little bit of a misstep. It's it's not a huge one, um, but it does take some of the mystery out of it. And I think Laraz is trying to characterize Helen in a way that we don't need, trying to contextualize her a little bit. At the end, we do see a vision that uh, Helen is seeing from her window before she's arrested of Cora and Brady having an affair outside. And that's uh, an attempt, I think, to kind of give her some motive for the killings to, to kind of figure out why exactly she was pushed to this limit. But at the same time, it feels more like Laraz trying to work in the lesbianism aspect of this um, because he is an erotic film director, uh, first and foremost, and a horror director secondary as far as vampires and some of his other films are concerned and it some sometimes symptoms kind of dwells on that territory um there are a couple scenes where Anne undresses and we see her from uh behind and uh that's from Helen's perspective as well kind of looking in on her and similar similarly um she it has a vision that Cora visits her in her bed 
And so it sounds, it seems like Larez is trying to work in that lesbian aspect as much as possible. And I don't think that that's really needed, especially for a motive in that finale of Symptoms. Um, we don't really need to know that much about Helen to figure out why she's doing what she's doing. Um, the title itself, Symptoms, seems to indicate symptoms of mental illness so that were not picked up by both the townspeople who seem concerned about Helen, but not really uh, having anything to do with her. Uh, and also Anne, who obviously is concerned for her friend after staying with her, but doesn't really know what to do. So um, I don't really feel like we need that additional contextualization for Helen later on in the film. Other than that, though, um, Symptoms is a really fun, s slow moving. So uh, keep that in mind when you when you do uh, set out to watch this film. Um, anybody who's not into slow burn films um, may not get the enjoyment out of Symptoms that others will. Uh, but this gothic thriller is really uh, has a great atmosphere, really moody. Um, something to throw on when you're, you've got a thunderstorm on a dark and stormy night, which I actually did on Sunday when we had a huge thunderstorm blow up. I, I put on symptoms. I thought it was going to be a great, uh, great thing to have on while the thunderstorm was raging outside and, and it fit perfectly. And I actually, uh, couldn't tell if it was thunder on the TV or thunder outside. So perfect for that. Um, but I wanted to talk about a little bit Gotta wet the whistle there. Um, a little bit about Mono Macabro's release. Uh, they've released it in two different formats. Uh, there's one that's just a standard Blu-ray, uh, which is one disc, and that's the one that I received for a review. Uh, so this one is just a standard uh, Blu-ray disc, one disc itself, um, and nothing, you know, no, no inclusion of uh, any sort of uh, booklet or anything like that. It's pretty much just a just a standard Blu-ray. Uh, but this uh, video quality looks really good. It's presented in a 4-3 aspect ratio, which is from the original negative. Uh, and so I don't think you're really going to see symptoms in any better quality than what you're getting from Mondo Macabro right now. Um, the audio sounds really good as well. It's presented in mono, so obviously there are some limitations to what you're going to get from the audio. But uh, overall, it's a, it's a good experience, and there's no you know, dips in audio quality or anything like that. Um, the other Blu-ray edition that uh, Mondo Macabro has released is a it's a red Blu-ray uh, case instead of the blue normal blue, um, and that one is a two-disc special edition which I did not get for review. But um, you can imagine that that just has even more special features than what this one has on it. Uh, but this one is still packed with special features. Um, the the one of the bigger things that you get in this is a complete documentary um, and that's on vampires and other symptoms which is a documentary uh, in um, Spanish for uh, Jose Larraz. It, it kind of is an overview of his work within the horror uh, genre and also it, it features quite a bit of film footage which was one of the flaws of this documentary. There's a lot of film footage from both vampires and symptoms that really adds to the running time without giving anything, any information or any necessary things that we might need to know uh, about Laraz. Um, but the, the interviews with Laraz are enlightening and there's a really great um, experimental approach to the narrative of Laraz's uh, you know, past in film which is presented as a comic because he did start out w within the comic sphere. And, um, that's just a really kind of a great throwback to <clears throat> the director's earlier work. Um, so that in itself is a, a cool artistic approach to the documentary, but I wouldn't say that on vampires and other symptoms is a great documentary. You don't get a ton of information about the so I would only recommend it to diehard fans of uh, Laraz's work. Um, but that amounts to about an hour and 15 minutes of extra film footage that you wouldn't normally get if you just got a Symptoms Blu-ray with, without any special features. Um, but <clears throat> also included is a Eurotica um, interview with Laraz, uh, which lasts about half an hour split into two parts. He discusses not only Symptoms, but a, a bunch of his other films that he's worked on before, uh, gives some good context for uh, for his film work. And then there are three new interviews um, 
with the cast of Symptoms and also uh, the editor of Symptoms. And that's about another hour of special features. And these are new for Mondo Macabro's Blu-ray. So that's kind of great that we you get new interviews from these uh, stars, especially Angela Pleasance, who has a lot to say about Symptoms and uh, her work on that. So um, some really great special features make this, uh, at least this copy of Symptoms with the one disc, a really good purchase. And I'm assuming that with the, you know, the red uh, case Blu-ray set, uh, that's just even better. I'm not exactly sure what's included on that one, but I'm guessing it's everything on this one plus more. So definitely want to pick that up uh, if you're a huge fan. And I think that one's a limited edition copy with numbering. So, you know, if you're a stickler for having limited edition stuff with the numbers on it, or if you just like to hawk things on eBay, we don't like you, but, um, you know, pick that one up instead. Um, just add adds more to it. So... Uh, but anyway, I uh, gave Symptoms an 8 out of 10. Uh, that's That uh, factors into uh, both the film and the special features and packaging. Film itself, I gave a 7.5 uh, out of 10. And the special features, I gave an 8.5 out of 10. And you can probably even increase that if you're talking about the uh, the red disc, the, the red case copy of, of the Symptoms Blu-ray. Um, thanks for watching, and uh, I will be back again with obviously with more reviews, um, please make sure that you subscribe to this page uh, so that you know you can get up-to-date stuff, all of my reviews, and also head over to themoonisdeadworld.net where I post all of my written reviews and also some of these video reviews as well. Um, and uh, thanks for watching. I'll be back next time.